Today I have a really special video for you. We're going to talk about the best landscape photography books, or probably more accurately, some of my favorites. Um, books are a subject that I could talk about all day long, so we're going to try and cover as many as possible during this short video. I'm going to go through quite a few and we're going to switch the camera to the overhead view so that you can look straight at them and I can walk you through a few of them. Um, there's just so many great landscape photographers and landscape photography books out there. And the show topic for today was originally going to be um, the importance of buying books rather than gear. But when I started thinking about it, I thought the best way to prove this point is to simply show you so many books and how they have influenced me in my personal photography. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take a look at some of my favorite landscape photography books. So let's get started. The first book I want to talk about is by Elliot Porter, and it's In Wildness is the Preservation of the World. Uh, this book is really special to me because Elliot Porter captures the woodlands of the American Northeast better than anyone I've ever seen. And his images are very unconventional because they basically ignore most compositional principles of photography and he just kind of does his own thing, which makes his work very unique and a little messy and quirky. Um, but if you are familiar with the locations that he photographs, they these images are incredibly emotional and they just really capture the soul of these locations um, incredibly well the quality is perfect he shot everything on large format film uh, mostly i think eight by ten the little four by five and his images have a very muted kind of a neutral look to them. They're not hyped up, saturated, contrasty, anything like that. They're very uh, quiet. Uh, I like to describe Elliot's work as nature with her hair down. He was one of the great color photographers and, uh, or I should say one of the first great color photographers ever. He was so early to color photography that he had to develop a lot of his own color chemistry because it wasn't commercially available yet at the time that he was working. And he was actually forced into color photography because um, at the time he was shooting birds in black and white and the publisher he took his work to told him that he could not, they couldn't publish the work because the birds weren't distinguishable in black and white. So he was forced to get into color and then that eventually led him into landscape work. This particular book is especially excellent because it is paired with journal entries from Henry David Thoreau's personal journals. And Henry David Thoreau uh, also was from the American North Eastern Woodlands and was arguably the best writer uh, of, from that area. And uh, he lived during the 1800s and he isolated himself in a cabin in the woodlands and got to know the place incredibly well and had if you're not familiar with his writing i would definitely look it up it is excellent great american literature just such a great book honestly this in wildness is the preservation of the world one of my favorite landscape photography books of all time And there are many, many more pages. You will just have to buy the book yourself. So check it out. This is In Wildness is the Preservation of the World. And this edition is published by Ammo Publishers. Another excellent book by Elliot Porter is Appalachian Wilderness, The Great Smoky Mountains. And this is also the East Coast of the United States. And it's also woodland photography on large format film. And um, this one is more documentary in nature, and it has a lot of sketches and uh, naturalistic um, drawings and notes about the different um, plant and animal species. It also is paired with poetry readings uh, related to the subject matter. 
So again, it's that idea of pairing literature and poetry with um, landscape photography, which I really, really love. And uh, this was part of what inspired me to make my own uh, magazines and books eventually. Again, you know, you see Elliot's um, you know, muted tones, uh, low contrast, simple compositions um, of sort of messy, chaotic scenes and lots of writing in this book as well. So this is Appalachian Wilderness, The Great Smoky Mountains by Elliot Porter. And you'll notice a lot of my books are sort of ragged looking. That's because I buy them at used bookstores and library sales and wherever I can find them. I would recommend you do the same because it's a great way to save money and get a lot of great art books. Here's another one by Elliot Porter. It's called Down the Colorado. And this one is paired with the um, journals of John Wesley Powell. And uh, this is his diary of the first trip through the Grand Canyon with photographs by Elliot Porter. Now this is our sort of um, where I, closer to where I live now in the American Southwest. And again, you're gonna see, you know, you're not gonna see the really loud, uh, super saturated contrasty work you see today on social media. You're gonna see these quiet sort of meditative scenes. And uh, again, some of his sort of messy, uh, often chaotic compositions. And that's just classic Elliot Porter. But again, he captures the spirit of the place in a very sort of heart aching way. <laughs> this one's kind of funny. I don't think he shot this one, but I could be wrong. Um, so this one is more about the Grand Canyon. Again, a sort of documentary approach paired with um, prose writing and so on. So this one's really good. Um, I would recommend the other two first instead of getting this one. This is just more if you want like further reading on Elliot Porter. And one more from Elliot Porter before we move on to the next person. Um, this one is American Places. And again, it's paired with a lot of writing, arguably too much. Um, but I bought it because I really like collecting Elliot Porter's work and I can't afford original prints. So, you know, purchasing the books is the best way to, to collect his work for me. But I really love the images. And, you know, again, you're going to see this sort of quiet, um, understated images with these very peaceful compositions shot on large format film. Um, this time of the American Southwest. So this is American Places by Elliot Porter uh, with writing by Wallace Stegner and Paige Stegner. Still on the topic of the American Southwest, this one is a personal favorite of mine because Anza Borrego is very close to my home. It's one of my favorite places to do landscape photography. And I would actually like to publish a book of my own on landscape uh, photography from Anza Borrego in the very near future. So um, this is particularly inspiring to me. It's a body of all large format work created in Anza Borrego Desert State Park in Southern California. Um, Anza Borrego, if you're not familiar with it, is sort of like Death Valley's southern sister. A lot of people go straight to Death Valley and never even look at Anza Borrego on the map, but it is a vast and beautiful desert. It takes probably two hours to drive across it from one side to the other. It's so big. Um, and yet most people have never heard of it. It's in San Diego County, and it features the same desert landscapes that you uh, would expect in Death Valley, like... Um, playas and uh, well in this case an oasis um, <clears throat> you know dry lake beds um, badlands formations uh, slot canyons uh, mountain multiple desert mountain ranges and so on and uh, some of these locations were never photographed at all really on a professional level outside of this book which is just really um, really inspiring to me and I've been creating my own work for the past several years in the same park. And uh, like I said, I'm working on coming out with uh, some printed materials of my own from this same location. So I found this work incredibly inspiring. If you're from Southern California, especially, I cannot possibly recommend this book highly enough. Uh, this one is Anza Borrego Desert State Park. Uh, 
with photos and captions by Paul R. Johnson, words by Harry Daniel Mark C. Jorgensen and Paul R. Johnson. Let's take a look at some work from Africa. This is Nick Brandt's work. Um, this is the final installment in a series. I don't have the other books in the series just because they are a little bit expensive. And um, I was able to pick up this copy here, which is an autographed copy uh, signed by Nick Brandt here. And um, I picked it up in person at his exhibition of this same project. Um, if you're not familiar with Nick's work, um, he goes to East Africa and he photographs uh, big wildlife. And his specialty is uh, documenting the unsustainable development practices and uh, the illegal poaching of these uh, great animals like the giraffes and elephants um, and lions and rhinoceros in and, and the oxen in East Africa. And um, his work is very, very transformative. It's very uh, sort of soul shaking. It's, it's, it's serious work. It's, it's work you don't take lightly. It affects you, it sticks with you. All his work was created on medium format six by seven film uh, using old fashioned cameras. Some of the work as you see here is actually a fold out and this uh, one is so big, it's like three feet wide, it's, it's, or one meter wide, it's, it's huge. And so I highly, highly recommend this book. One of the other reasons to buy Nick's books are the, is the print quality. Um, Nick Brandt is renowned for his print quality. He is a perfectionist, his attention to detail is impeccable, and uh, his books have been lauded by a lot of very picky photographers as some of the best book printing they have ever seen. So definitely look at any of the books by Nick Brandt. Um, he has um, Across the Ravaged Land, A Shadow Falls, and Inherit the Dust. And this one is Inherit the Dust by Nick Brandt. Highly recommended. This one is another sort of uh, a little unconventional. Um, Ernst Haas uh, isn't his work is re reminds me a little bit of Elliot Porter's work in that it's kind of messy. He doesn't really follow the compositional rules like you see a lot of people rigidly adhering to today. Um, he shot, of course, all his work on film. And um, this book is just really inspiring to me um, because the subject matter is really close to home. Um, the book is called The Creation. And uh, it's just uh, it's themed from the book of Genesis in the Bible. And he just kind of goes through and sort of illustrates the ideas uh, of the different categories uh, of nature and creation um, sequentially uh, in the book. And I just think it's a really, really interesting idea and it's incredibly beautiful. The work is like not the big epic landscapes you might expect to see, although some of them are, but um, what you really see are just a lot of really um, scenes that show that he gets the landscape, that he loves the landscape, that he's really taken the time to get to know these places and to photograph them well. I mean, this is just tiny details in sandstone here uh, in the Southwest. Um, again, more sandstone details. Like he's just staring at these scenes and looking for these incredible little details. And um, yeah, I think this is limestone. And here we have water. He's just photographing water and rainbows. Um, just tons of really inspiring work in this book. Um, one thing that's really unconventional about this one is that he's a landscape. He did landscape photography, but this is all on 35 millimeter film, and it just shows that um, you can create landscape photography with other formats. Um, and 35 millimeter film is not a format that we would normally consider today for landscape photography because of the lack of um, detail. But, um, you know, the portability of the cameras appealed greatly to Ernst Toss. And, you know, the work, I will say the quality, the, the, the technical quality suffers a little bit, but the, uh, the way he's able to get into these locations and really capture moments in nature is really inspiring. Um, this book is pretty rough uh, condition, because <laughs> again, I got a really good deal on it, um, on a used copy. And I had to actually repair it. But again, 
The Creation by Ernst Haas, just a really strong book, um, really inspiring and again, unconventional uh, as far as the rules of composition and the use of an unconventional medium for landscape photography. Uh, this one is a location specific book by Art Wolf. Um, and this is just California. I live in California, so I like collecting books that are uh, were created locally to me because the uh, inspiration kind of directly carries over into my own work. And Art Wolf, as you can see, is just a really fabulous photographer. And uh, the quality of his images is just really fantastic. Um, sorry for my boring adjectives, but you get the idea. <laughs> so you can see here, uh, some scenes from the Sierra, uh, printed full bleed, um, just incredible Alpen glow, uh, more Alpen glow. Just really, these are more of your classic landscapes, but I mean the the quality of the execution on these is just fantastic. He's also got some wildlife work in here, and all of the content is photographed in the state of California in the United States, which is really interesting if you live in California. Or even if you don't, maybe you're planning on visiting at some point in the future. Um, this is a, a bristlecone pine. This is the detail just from the trunk of one tree. And just he's capturing these subtle nuances of tone. It's just, it's again, getting to know the landscape, really taking your time to live with the landscape and to, and to capture the spirit of the landscape. And uh, yeah, I've been to this arch before. Uh, just really, really incredible work. Uh, from Art Wolf. So this is California by Art Wolf. This book is by Jack DeKinga, and he's got a couple of books out that I really love. Um, this is probably my overall favorite from him. It's called Large Format Nature Photography. And as you might have guessed from the title, uh, this is an educational book. Um, it's not a portfolio book like the others or, you know, an art book. It is actually a book on how to create these images, which if you're a photographer, you're going to find this incredibly helpful. If you're getting into large format nature photography or large format landscape photography, this is the best book I've read on the subject, period, by far. It's fantastic. And he gets into all the gritty technical details of all of the images, shows you what lenses he used, what settings he used, you know, um, in great detail, what movements he used. Uh, why he chose a particular camera or a particular lens, a particular movement for each image, what types of film he shot on, and so on. And he goes into great detail about backpacking and, you know, the weights of, and the uh, space requirements of all your different individual gear items. And uh, he teaches composition, but not just composition. He's teaching you composition with the use of large format view camera movements like rise, fall, swing, tilt, and so on. And so it's incredibly helpful. You know, he even has these diagrams of the camera showing, you know, how it was set up for a particular image. Um, so you can visualize it really easily. You know, showing uh, here the use of rear swing to capture this, the depth of field on this uh, rock face. and. Um, and so on. One of the things I really, really love about this book, and this is a great page to show it on, is Jack DeKinga had these images that he shot on a large format film that are, they seem impossible even with 35 millimeter, and yet he's able to capture them on large format, which is just mind blowing. Um, this image here, he has cacti blossoms right smack in front of the lens. And then he's got this saguaro cacti all the way in the background. And then he's got this big arm thing and it's all in focus. And it's just, it's mind blowing. Like I don't even, it seems impossible. And yet he pulls it off and then he teaches you how to do it. Um, this scene here, he has again, you know, icicles. He stuck the camera behind a bunch of icicles against a cliff face and then shot this rock formation in the background at sunrise. And he has perfect dynamic range detail from the shadows all the way to the highlights and everything is in focus and it was shot on large format film and it just seems completely impossible like even with with micro four thirds this image or with focus stacking this image would seem very difficult to pull off and yet he does it and he shows you how so this book is in my opinion this is the book to buy if you're getting into large format nature photography it's just there's nothing better it's the best one on the subject
Um, this book here is another one. It's um, kind of from a spiritual angle. Um, obviously, Ernst Haas's work is from a Christian perspective, um, and this one is from a Buddhist perspective, so it's going to be quite different. Um, I'm not a Buddhist, but I really enjoyed this book because it. I like the mindset. Uh, the mindset approach was the approach of Zen and uh, kind of meditation, and so he gets into how to um, he gets into how to make images from your surrounding environment by simply being. Uh, really in tune with your surroundings and looking at what's actually there um, in raw aesthetic terms. So rather than saying like, oh, I see a mountain or I see a tree, he gets into like, I see shape or form or color or I, you know, sense the wind rustling in the leaves or, you know, I, I see um, light and shadow. Like this is just... Um, light falling on these uh, stairs and yet like it's this really exotic compelling composition and he saw that you know just by paying attention to his surroundings so if you want to learn how to pay really detailed really close attention to your surroundings and be really in tune with your environment and sort of unclutter your mind so you can see what's actually in front of you this is um, you know in my opinion the best book on that learning how to see and learning how to see as a photographer is um, probably the most valuable skill that you can learn. And so this, you know, this is purely a mental book. It's about mental exercise uh, and clearing your mind and just really being in tune with your surroundings and what's actually going on around you rather than getting preoccupied with what particular image you want to make or what particular subject you want to photograph, you know, handlebars, <laughs> uh, tiles, you know, the reflection in a mirror. Uh, things like that, you know, he's, I mean, a construction site, you know, he's looking for these details, these beautiful details in daily life. And I think learning how to see those details in your daily life and in all your surroundings is just going to change the way you see the world, change the way you experience life, and definitely going to make you a better artist. So this is The Practice of Contemplative Photography, Seeing the World with Fresh Eyes by Andy Carr and Michael Wood. Um, again, like some of the book kind of gets into some deeper Buddhist principles, which, you know, may or may not be what you want to read. So, um, but the overall uh, mindset approach of clearing the mind and sort of looking at the world through meditative eyes is incredibly valuable as an artist. So for that reason, I recommend this book. And I think it's really been very instrumental in my own photography, helping me to learn to see uh, past my preconceptions and see the world as it truly is. So... So let's get into some Ansel Adams. Um, this one here is actually not Ansel Adams, but I'm going to start with it just because it's a really good book. Um, this is the Ansel Adams Wilderness, and uh, this is an example of a modern digital photographer approaching the Ansel Adams Wilderness sort of the way Ansel Adams would have done it. So it's all these big, compelling black and white landscapes with a lot of rich detail, um, but you can probably tell he shot all this on digital photography and then converted it from color to black and white. And so it's just a really good example of how you don't necessarily have to use the same tools. Like I choose to use large format right now as a way of creating images like this, but you don't have to. So Peter Essek chose to uh, shoot digital 35 millimeter, but to approach uh, the landscape from the mindset of a large format black and white photographer. And he created some really interesting work in the Ansel Adams wilderness. And I just find the book really inspiring. And I like reading about his journeys and how he created the images. So that's the Ansel Adams wilderness. It's a National Geographic book. Um, and it's by Peter Essek. Uh, this book is Looking at Ansel Adams, The Photographs and the Man. And uh, this one here is by Andrea Stillman, who worked with Ansel Adams for a big chunk of her career. And so really got to know him very well and uh, helped him create a lot of his images. And uh, it's just a really deep dive on the practical uh, behind the scenes of Ansel Adams' work. And again, you know, like Jack DeKinga's book, if you're getting into large format photography, this is a terrific book to pick up just because you get to see the technical behind the scenes nitty gritty details of how Ansel created his images and about his mindset and his artistic approach. And I just find this book incredibly helpful because uh, getting to see inside the head of Ansel Adams 
and to get to know the man is really valuable. If you're trying to be a great photographer, studying the great photographers is a great place to start. And this book is a book that helps you do just that. So that's Looking at Ansel Adams, The Photographs and the Man by Andreas Stillman. Here's a classic book, it's pretty faded, but you've got the portfolios of Ansel Adams, um, and this is just Ansel's portfolios. So pretty straightforward. Um, the work is divided up into these different categories uh, of the way Ansel divided it. Uh, they're just called portfolios. And basically what it does is it walks you through uh, Ansel's life from the beginning of his photographic career when he was first starting out and learning um, all the way, well, these are just some fantastic images, but all the way to the end of his photographic uh, career and uh, just gives you a really terrific overview of the work of Ansel Adams. So great book if you're interested in collecting Ansel Adams' work. Uh, this is The Portfolio of Ansel Adams. Another book I would recommend, I don't have right here with me, but it's called um, Ansel Adams' 400 Photographs, and uh, that's another excellent anthology of Ansel Adams' work to pick up if you're interested in studying his work. Another technical guide, we have um, an Ansel Adams guide, Basic Techniques of Photography by John Schaefer. And uh, this one here is uh, extremely technical, so I would really only recommend this if you're getting into black and white film uh, photography, um, but the details of the technical information on everything from, you know, exposure to uh, development to printing in the dark room and even color work, uh, color dark room work, is just incredibly helpful. Um, if you're shooting film, this is a superb book to buy uh, to learn uh, dark room work with analog film, and this is. Basic Techniques of Photography by John Schaefer, an Ansel Adams guide. I would be remiss to talk about large format landscape photography or landscape photography in general without mentioning Philip Hyde. Uh, this is Drylands. Again, the book's pretty faded. It's a library copy, um, but you can see just got some really terrific large format landscape photography in here um, and just a lot of great images from the American Southwest and lots of technical information, not about the photography so much, but about uh, the desert. So if you wanna to get to know the places you photograph, again, you see that theme throughout all this work, getting to know the places you photograph. Um, this is a really good book to do that um, because he goes in great detail through the deserts, the different desert region, regions, like the Painted Desert and the Mojave and uh, the Colorado Desert and so on. Um, and he just really breaks it down and explains um, you know, the, the ecosystems and the geology and all of that kind of stuff in great detail. And so really like this book by Philip Hyde. This is the book Dry Lands, the Deserts of North America by Philip Hyde. This is um, The Yosemite by Galen Rowell. And the text is by John Muir. And again, this is a great partnership collaboration between Gil and Raoul, one of the greatest photographers of the Yosemite region, and John Muir, one of the greatest writers about the Yosemite region. Um, pairing great writing and great photography is just something I really enjoy. Um, it's something that's been really inspiring to my own work. And um, Galen, um, he uh, shot all his work in 35 millimeter film by choice. Uh, he was fully aware of large format, but decided to shoot 35 millimeter because he loved hiking and climbing and just really getting out there into the landscape in these. He was climbing these sheer cliff faces and doing with ropes and you know doing very technical stuff and getting into these locations where you know it was like your base gear was extremely heavy and bulky and so. You know, he felt that uh, being liberated to carry less was more important than technical quality. So he really wanted to get out into the landscape and be unimpeded by his camera. And so he chose 35 millimeter film and even would pick the smallest and lightest cameras and lenses that he could find. So um, definitely a unique approach, kind of similar to uh, what Ernst Haas did, but his work is nothing like Ernst's work. It's very different. Um, and it's just super beautiful. 
highly recommend checking out Gil and Raul's work. And if you're ever in Bishop, California, be sure to stop at his gallery. It's called Mountain Light Gallery. So this is the Yosemite by Gail and Rowell with text by John Muir. And again, if you're not familiar with John Muir's work, definitely look it up. And last but not least, just want to um, show you my own work. This is uh, a, a zine series that I'm working on. Uh, it's called Salt and Light. And the first issue was Mojave Monochrome. Second issue was Zion's Palette. And I'm currently working on the third issue, which is gonna be called Places Unknown. And uh, this is, you'll see the, the direct lineage from the work that I was showing you, you know, pairing writing about getting to know these locations with photographs of the locations themselves shot on large format film. And um, a lot of uh, behind the scenes and sort of technical information about the making of the images. But anyway, that's my magazine. Um, these are kind of like soft cover books rather than a magazine because I wanted them to be affordable, but also very high quality. And so they go for $14.99 or $7.99 for the electronic version. And again, these were directly inspired by a lot of the work I just showed you. So I thought I'd show them because it's relevant. Um, so that's a collection of just some of my favorite photography books on landscape photography. I hope you enjoyed the list. Um, making videos about inspiring artists and um, you know helping you guys get to know other artists uh, that I've found uh, helpful over the years is something I'd like to do a lot more videos about. If that's something that interests you, be sure to subscribe and make sure you like the video. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay curious.